I'm gonna start the video off by saying I do not condone anabolic steroid use. This is simply going over my previous experience with it. I haven't taken anything in two and a half years and don't take steroids. But I'm gonna go over my personal favorite anabolic steroid of all time that I used, Anavar, also known as Oxandrolone. So this was originally invented for medical use. It's one of the few anabolic steroids that does have medicinal purposes. And this is used and has been used to treat burn victims as well as people with muscle wasting um, and to put on body weight and stuff, you know, stuff like that. Now, it's not widely used by doctors anymore. It's not prescribed very often, but it does have, you know, valid medicinal uses, which a lot of them don't. And so that's probably why it's one of the safer compounds, although it does still have side effects, which I will get into. Now, there are very few side effects, I will honestly say from my experiences. Just as with any other anabolic steroid, the lipids are affected. Your HDL, which is your good cholesterol, quote unquote, um, is cut in half. So I noticed my, LD, my HDL will get slashed in half. LDL, not a huge effect, and very minimal impact on the liver enzymes, which was very interesting. So there has been some debate, and it's been said that Anavar passes through the kidneys as opposed to the liver, like traditional orals, and that might be why there's very little liver toxicity with it. It can still have some liver toxicity from what I've seen, but on my liver, on my panels, my liver enzymes were in the mid-30s, even on this. So that's not very elevated compared to other um, orals like Anadrol, Superdrol, Halotestin, which are going to elevate your liver enzymes of AST and ALT into the hundreds even a lot of times. So really didn't touch my liver enzymes much at all, just a, a bit of an effect on HDL. And I didn't notice any physical negative side effects, no acne. I felt completely normal, just like I do on testosterone. No mental side effects as far as that goes. I just felt normal, nothing bad. So that was pretty cool. Now, I didn't discover this until later on in my lifting career. The first, uh, I think it was the last three years that I was on PEDs is when I started taking this because I always thought of it as a chick steroid. That's kind of the cliche that gets passed around in powerlifting circles where why would you use Anavar when you could use Anadrol, uh, Superdrol, Halotest, and Dianabol, all those other things that are supposedly stronger. But when I finally gave it a shot, I was blown away by the, uh, the strength gains. I would put it as my second favorite anabolic steroid from a strength standpoint. So as far as the best strength gains I got, I would put it number two behind Trenblone Acetate. Um, I'd put it as my favorite anabolic steroid that I've ever used, but from a strength standpoint, I would only put it behind Trenblone Acetate as far as the strength gains. Maybe you could you could maybe make the argument Super Draw was stronger. I have a guy right now on Superdrol, and he was just on Anavar, and he's seeing a little better progress on Superdrol. So you can maybe give the edge to Superdrol, but it's right up there in terms of potency. Um, freakish strength gains for me. I never got to combine it with Trenblone because at that point I'd made the life and business decision to give up Trenblone, period. But I always wonder what it would be like stacking Trenblone with Anavar. It probably would have been insane strength gains because it was already insane on just Anavar. I would obviously have a test base. You need a testosterone base at all times or you're really not going to get in anything out of these. Um, just running these compounds by themselves is, is ridiculous. The, the test base, even if it's low, needs to be there at like 100, 125 mg. But I noticed freaky explosiveness. My deadlift would feel so much more explosive. Um, I was just ripping weights off the ground. The most notable example was a video I have, which I will post now of a 794 pound double, which is 360 kilos. And I absolutely smashed it to the point where I was planning coming in to do two reps. I think I could have easily hit five, maybe six. I mean, you be the judge, the bar speed, would, bar speed was incredible. And this was after about three weeks on Anavar. And I was doing the same kind of speed with 750 like three weeks before. So we're putting 20 kilos on 44 pounds and the speed was the exact same. Just freakish speed, could have hit five, five to six reps, I have no doubt. I kind of wish I'd pushed it in hindsight on that one, but I was being smart. And I've noticed with Anavar and a lot of orals, they don't really kick in for two weeks. So as far as, that's not entirely true, they're obviously doing things before two weeks is up, but at the 14 day mark is when I start to really notice the strength gains on all orals, whether it's Dianabol, Anavar, any of them. 
So for two weeks, I was like, is this even doing anything? I'm not noticing anything, no strength gains, nothing like that. And then at that point, I got some pretty freakish strength gains. And it just, the, the thing about it was with the lack of liver toxicity, I would run it for longer periods of time, upwards of 10 to 12 weeks um, for my entire meat prep. And I saw ridiculous gains off it. And I, I know I keep using these uh, superlatives, but it just was like that. I would do test NPP and Anavar, and it was really good gains. It was still not on the level of just test and trend alone as far as the strength gains, but they were pretty good. I mean, I had 900 pounds to my knees in a meet on testosterone, NPP, Anavar, and then at the end I swapped out Anavar for Halo. But it was the bulk of my meat prep was on Anavar, and it was really, really good strength gains. Now, what's interesting about Anavar is if we go off testosterone as the one to one example for every other anabolic steroid. So testosterone would have a 100 anabolic rating and a 100 androgenic rating. Um, and we base every other steroid off that, whereas trenbolone they say is 500, 500. So trenbolone has a 500 anabolic rating, 500 andro androgenic rating compared to test being 100, 100. Anavar is around 325 anabolic rating. I've seen even arguments made where people say it's 500. So that's almost the level of anabolic rating of, of trend, but it's not androgenic at all. So that's why it's a chick steroid because there are not the androgenic masculine, masculinizing effects that we see on like a trend or a halo test or an anadrol. So that's why the side effects are lower. Typically the lower androgenic rated uh, anabolic steroids do not have the sides that, that you'd see on a high androgenic rating like a trend. So 325 is pretty high, which makes sense. And when I saw that, that's what really started to intrigue me as far as the possible benefits of running it, and that's when I started doing it. Now, increases nitrogen retention, which essentially means the food you eat, the protein you eat is going to be better utilized. You're going to get more muscle mass out of it. Um, it decreases SHBG, so decreases sex hormone binding globulin, which if you decrease that, you free up free testosterone. You have more circulating testosterone in your blood. You can get stronger. So SHBG you want to have in that 15 to 20 range typically. You don't want to bottom it out as like with any other hormone. There has to be a balance. You don't want something too high, but you don't want it too low. Same with estradiol. So 15 would probably be the sweet spot for SHBG, and this decreases that in itself. Uh, promotes lipolysis, which is fat loss. It's the body's ability to burn fat stores for energy. So that's pretty ridiculous. So this also can help you lean out and burn your body's fat for fuel while taking it, which is insane. That's just another benefit. I never was like cutting on it because I was just eating whatever I wanted to reap the strength benefits and I wasn't super strict with the diet. But obviously that would be a pretty potent tool if you were uh, trying to lean out or cut down. If you were watching your calories and eating clean, you could see some major benefits and, and get your body fat lower. And I've seen this with people where they really think you know, see, say it seems to help their body fat. Now, the tricky thing with Anavar is it is often faked and it is often quite expensive. So my source at the time who got taken down by the feds, he was a phenomenal source, very high-end operation, which is why he was targeted. He was dealing large quantities, but that's another story. Um, very professional and it was legit Anavar. And he, it was the third most expensive steroid he sold outside of Halo Testin was the most expensive, and then Prima Bolin. So Anavar was, honestly, it was like half the price of Halo, but it was still expensive compared to all the other ones. And the thing with Anavar, if you do not have a reputable source, it is often not what it says it is. It is often something else. It is often Winstrel, which is going to dry out your joints and lead to you know problems as a power lifter, someone trying to lift heavy weight. I would not recommend Winstrel. I never ran Winstrel. I know it has... Great strength properties, but it dries out the joints. So you might be getting Winstrol instead of Anavar. That's always a danger with it, which would lead to muscle tears and such. Um, you might be getting something else. You just don't know. So Anavar is often underdosed, fake, that sort of thing, um, which is why you got to be careful because it's not something that you're easily going to attain a lot of times. And you'll often see these like knockoff, garbage, pro hormone, crappy, whatever supplements called Anavar, but they're not really Anavar. So if you're like buying it off Amazon or some random website, it's probably not really Anavar. Uh, so you just really have to be careful as far as what you're taking when you take this stuff because 
there is that danger. That was another thing that turned me off from trying it for so many years. I was like, how am I going to know I'm getting real stuff? Because at that, at that point in time, I was just getting referrals from people who were getting gear from someone, presumably making it in their basement off bulk shipments of powder from China. So I didn't, I didn't really trust the process. Whereas at the end of my, my time taking stuff, I had a very reputable source and I knew it was legit. So legit Anavar will knock your socks off, quite frankly. Um, I'm still not saying like, oh, everybody go run out and take Anavar. It's amazing. Like, I know this is a rather glowing, positive review of it, but I'm trying to be as objective as possible to give my accurate experiences. I'm not saying, oh, it's still healthy. Obviously, it's going to be unhealthy to take any anabolic steroid. Um, this isn't like TRT, guys. So I'm not recommending it or anything like that. I'm just stating that this was one of the better experiences. I did not get the blood pressure side effects as much. Obviously, every anabolic steroid is going to raise your blood pressure and such, but it wasn't pronounced like on Halo and all that. Now, if you guys like the video, give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. I will keep the channel going all year, and I appreciate you guys.